Does that answer your question? Or? No, but it's a good start. <laughs> and Roy, I'm going to turn to you. I mean, I think these questions are so difficult. Yeah. And I think you've given an incredibly important lesson, really, too, if we include your socks, because you're the only one who's prepared enough to know that we may be sitting not behind a table, but actually wear Me? our footwear. Yes, <laughs> but you're my boss, <laughs> so I have to pay attention to the socks. But I do think, you know, I, I think the best that we can do is start to take away lessons. And you've given that critical answer, which is that we have to get a diversity of views. I mean, I think even earlier we heard a couple of people almost, you know, before we came on, uh, hissing to, uh, you know, alternative points of view. And it's really important to listen because it gives us the skills we need to get to critical thinking. And with that, Roy, let me, let me turn it over to you. Up until just a couple years ago, you had Silicon Valley, which was very much a libertarian approach. They can do no evil. Now, one of the few things increasingly both parties seem to agree on, at least in its nascent stage, is to regulate uh, Silicon Valley. Do you think that's going to help us get closer to real truth? Is it going to have some impact on the next, uh, next election? How are you seeing these changes that are starting to be proposed? Uh, first, I want to do a little polling. Uh, how many of you in the audience follow an influencer that you get your news out of from and you know what's going on with them? You guys follow influencers to get what, you, what the updates? Or you follow like for instance even uh, uh, Snapchat when you zoom in you can see the stories when things are happening and you zoom in on the map so you can see what's going on in that particular area. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? So this is the world you're going to be living in. And, and the world, the media is transitioning and the big companies are in trouble, like basically Fox, New York Times, Washington Post, they're all in trouble because they used to be the controllers of this medium, right? And what's going on, we're all, the younger generation are turning to places, to influencers, to those, the, the actual fact versus the reported story. And that transition is what you will be leading on. You will be, you are the new channels. You're the new channels of the new generation. It's not them, it's not us, it's basically the truth is now becoming more, less filtered with those layers of editing. And what's going on, it used to be where, you know, all those regulations were on television, on radio, they had those regulations. On the web, there's no regulation, and the, that's the, the beauty of it. You get the facts as it is. You want things as real as possible. And the way I think about it is, we used to go to, you know, the, the Washington Post, the New York Times to get the updates, to get the real truth. What's more true than opening up, opening up Snapchat or Insta stories, going to the actual location of the story happening, and see what's going on, real feed from real people? I'm getting the real fact. And that's the, that's the duty that you have to take on to build on that brand of yours, to be the journalist, to be the voice reporting the truth of, with the new generation of technology. So the way I think about it, if you're not, build, if you're not thinking about those stuff, if you're still thinking about you know, going on an article, reporting it like it used to be. Yes, it's awesome. It's, it's, a, good, it's a good fact check for, the, you know, for, the gener for, the gen for some generations. But 60% of young people get their news from Facebook and Instagram and, and Snapchat. So whether you like it or not, things are changing. And it's up to you to make that distinction and stand out and start creating those stories to be, to be I mean, I, even on CNN, I don't even go on the website. I, I follow the, the reporter on, on his Instagram stories to get what's going on. And even like the way he puts his stories on Instagram is different than the website. Because the way I consume media on Instagram is much different than the way I consume media on a website, on an article. On Instagram, I want to be tapping, I want to be swiping. I don't want to be scrolling all the time. I want to see visuals. And that's the thing where if the government gets into that section of start regulating the web, that's going to be a whole different monster that I would say it will just limit that freedom we have. Because the fact that I can just tap into a, a map and see what I want to see from who I want to see, which are the people, which are the new channels of distribution, to me that gives me the freedom to make my own choices, which at the end of the day, fake news or real news, it's up to you to make the story. And like the old saying is, there's for every, for every, for every, for every, for every, for every story, there's three versions. There's the truth, there's your version, and there's my version. So it's up to you to pick up the truth from those three versions. So that's my take on this. Well, you know, two responses. One, you know, Plato and Socrates would probably ask the question if there really is ultimate truth there, which how many, just how many versions do we have? Uh, you know, Rodney, even Rodney King would say famously, not only why can't we just get along, but uh, you know, if you could have seen the entire version, not just uh, my video and not, uh, not just the video of, of the police uh, beating me, the truth is always bigger than even when we see it, I think, in the original form. But do you think that we're going to see regulation on Silicon Valley? And, and uh, Jack, did you want to comment on that? Um, 
Just to push back on a couple of those things, yes, I think the media or the internet and social media and a lot of these online forums are unfiltered, but they're also pretty fungible. Uh, there's plenty of room to maneuver within those channels to put out anything you want. Now, I, it, I understand your point about there's the, your version, the facts, and then you know, someone else's version, and those are all open to interpretation, but they're not edited. They're not filtered. I don't want you, it to be edited. I know you don't. I understand like the, the, you don't we, want it to be edited. We grew up in a generation we want the real things, and we don't want things to go through filters and to basically become your version. I want the truth. But that's not always the truth. I'm, that's the truth that I'm seeing in front of me. If I open up a filter and, and a camera on Instagram and I can see an actual location of the Texas thing, of the Vegas thing, what happened, to me, that's the truth. That's more true to me than going on an article. I mean, I know it's like... No, I understand what you're saying. someone's feelings here. I didn't stand... No, you're not hurting that. anyone's feelings. You're not hurting anyone's <laughs> yeah. feelings. I understand what you're saying. But I think that to say that the unfiltered content that comes to you via social media is the truth is is overly simplistic. I think there's too many truths out there. Yes, people can decide and, and discern what their truth is. They can read an established media report and say, well, maybe that's true and maybe it's not. But just because it's not filtered doesn't mean it's true. There are things, I mean, people use social media for all kinds of what things. What is it then? It can be an altered version of the truth. It can be someone you could do anything you want on social media. Facebook is not the truth. Facebook is like a magazine of your life. Is your life really as glamorous as it's portrayed on Facebook? I doubt it. But people make their lives look much more glamorous on Facebook. I'm not talking about Facebook anymore. But what social people media? Moved, I mean, the younger generation moved out of Facebook. Well, they're okay. All, they're all on Snapchat. So Snapchat, Snapchat's yeah. not any different? Snapchat is That's, as real as it can get. There the will be about. an ultimate cage fighting event <laughs> yeah. just after this. Yeah. Um, I, I'm just, no, I mean, I, I'm, str I'm struggling to understand your point. So when, they, 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 they know what I'm talking about. They're all young. Yeah. They're all on their phones. Well, actually, that's nice, but actually, that doesn't mean they're getting the truth. But, uh, yeah, Are I, you guys I, getting the truth? Uh, if we could, so, uh, Peter, if you want yeah, to... Yeah, let me, let, me, let, me, let me jump in and say, um, I think what you're hearing is that without question, social media has commoditized breaking news. And when you read the Washington Post and the New York Times now, there is almost a um, predetermination that you've been following the story. So take Las Vegas as an example. Right. By the next morning, for those of you on, on social channels, which I'm assuming is, is most, you were seeing, to your point, unfiltered real-time video that right. people shot at the event, horrific as it is. The New York Times, however, has spent weeks trying to take what are pieces to a puzzle and put them together into a clear and truthful picture. I, I'm, I'm hesitant to want to sign up to your world of the unfiltered because I think in the absence of editors, in the absence of investigative reporting, in the absence of just good reporting and going and talking to people who were in the building, combined with a fact-based set of videos and images that allow for pieces to be put into a real picture, you lose it both. So, so what I would say is both of you, in, in one respect, are, are very much right. But I think, the, to, to Jack's point, the ability to manipulate images and video is so profound now um, that you, the, your, your, you, know, you can sit at your Apple and create a video that's absolutely 100% false and put it out there and um, push it out as truth. And I think that's the danger, is, is that people with willful intent are manipulating images, content, and then putting a story behind it, and then moving a narrative. That, that's, that's the danger, as I see it. I mean, what I, what I also have to clarify, like we, I'm not saying just getting the whole truth, but also a lot of us here in this room, the younger crowd, we just follow certain influencers, mm -hmm. and we start trusting and building relationship with them. Mm -hmm. And those people have a following, we've been following them for a while, you know, you know they're truthful. You build that trust with them, more than, and if they're on the ground, you're basically trusting them more than you know, another, another source of alternative. I'm not saying just basically every person is trustworthy. I'm just saying we're in a generation where the influencers, which are basically a bunch of people online, have a following, and we build relationship with them. We kind of trust them for the truth more than the traditional media sets because we're getting from them the first-hand experience. Mm -hmm. You know, Roy, I think that a challenge for us, and maybe another homework assignment is, 
uh, to look at this and, you know, is this, is this goal of us and only us knowing truth an elusive goal? You know, the Russians through the Gasparov Doctrine, the very deliberate attempt to influence our election, which has been in, in uh, the works for 30 years, did exactly what you're saying, which was to penetrate and understand in a very deep way our influencers. And they've understood now that we get our information because we trust our influencers. And if you can influence the influencers, you can do so much as to impact the outcome. So I know I'm the moderator, but I, I think that I would caution that we not leave here thinking, well, I've got news from people I trust, therefore I know the truth, because I think that's what got us into this difficult state to begin with. I mean, it's up to you. I think it's, it's all going to go back to your, the person. It's up to you to basically understand all those metrics. But now we have more information, which is, to me, that's the, the whole democratization and the whole web democratization. The fact that I can just go on Snapchat, get some stories, go on Instagram, get some stories, then go maybe read you know, the Washington Post or NPR for the other version, the more in-depth version. I have, a better, I have a better picture of what the truth is than just them, the editor's lens, and this influencer lens only. So to combine those two, I'm actually making a full picture of what's going on uh, in that world. I'm so glad that in the definition of the truth, you mentioned NPR, so we're in good shape now. <laughs> um, you know, Kevin, Sheryl Sandberg was just on tour, and she articulated that uh, Facebook and the other Silicon Valley companies are tech companies. They're not news organizations. Do you want to give us your view of that or what you see on the Hill? Um, and then I'll open that up to the group. Um. My boss is the, the vice chair of the Senate Intelligence Committee, so we've been um, neck deep in the, the look back to um, Russian active measures during the last campaign, mainly to flood the zone and disrupt the conversation and sow discord and chaos. Um, more recently, my boss has turned his attention to how they effectively use social media, um, taking advantage of the very openness and unedited, uncurated nature of social media platforms um, to attempt to affect the conversation, not to brainwash people into voting for candidate A or B, perhaps more significantly to discourage people from voting for either. Um, in a national election that was decided by a relatively few votes in a handful of states, that could be significant. We don't know the full extent of it yet. Other than there are warehouses of trolls in, um, in Russia that do this 24-7. Um, Russia doesn't roll tanks across borders anymore. They infiltrate a national conversation and question the credibility of um, um, institutions and individuals. They do whatever they can just to run amok and, and cast doubt on democratic societies and democratic values. Um, my boss last week introduced a bill with John McCain that would, at the very least, apply some of the same disclosure and transparency to paid political messages on social media that you're used to seeing on TV or hearing on radio. This ad was paid for by um, transparency so journalists and informed citizens can see who paid for it, how much they paid, where it's running. <coughs> the social media companies um, well, at first, they said it was crazy to suggest that they played any role in disseminating misinformation or disinformation from Russia. But they are grudgingly realizing, I think, that the tide has turned a little bit. Um, when you think about the volumes of information that Google has on you as an individual, um, the information you willingly give up every time you access your smartphone. How advertising now by smart marketing people um, is so micro-targeted to you, where you are, where you've been, what you read, what you like, who you follow, um, how you react to what you see, where you are physically. 
Um, it's a stupendous amount of information and probably the vast majority of people don't care because they're just living their lives and it helps them navigate their lives. Um, but there can be mercenary uses mm -hmm. and nefarious uses. And I think that's a conversation that's been long overdue, and I think that's the conversation we're starting to have now. So why don't I uh, take input from each one of you on this question, and then uh, while we're doing that, if you could uh, prepare your questions, we'll start taking uh, questions from the audience uh, and make this as interactive as possible. Yeah, Peter? yeah. I think, you know, I think in an age where we are now seeing the emergence of news stories that are written by an algorithm, written, not, not collected for you, but, but, but literally written. And many of those stories um, revolve around the financial performance of, um, of uh, corporate shares um, read by Wall Street. You now have all of the pieces in place to have massive manipulation with financial gain as the reward from a, from a criminal intent. If we're not getting deep into this world, if we are not, you know, the, the um, you know, commend the House and the Senate for the hearings, figuring this stuff out, whether Facebook is a media company or a tech company may have implications for First Amendment right protections. But I would say just get into it and figure out what's happening because if we don't, uh, we could very well lose control. And now you start to have you know, the, the conversation over here around cyber attacks um, combined with fake news in, in ways that we could quickly lose control over, or, you know, we're going to be picking up the pieces as opposed to just trying to stay ahead of it. Um, I, you know, I'd like to think that legislation will help this problem. Um, I, not, I don't think it will, probably, in the end. I think that Facebook will comply with some of the ad rules to get Congress off its back and move on. Um, they've got lots of money. Silicon Valley has lots of money. This is already out there. It's already involved. Social media is a massive advertising tool. Uh, most people who use social media have given up all kinds of freedoms already, as Kevin put out there, because we're okay with that because we like the various things that social media brings us. That, you know, that horse has left the barn. There's really not much that can be done, I don't think, uh, realistically. I do think social media has a lot of value, just to counter our earlier discussion. Um, we use social media all the time. When we had the up Arab Spring, we used social media to track what was going on in the streets. We don't use social media as a primary reporting tool. In other words, we don't put everything on the air that comes across on social media. Though, when we have a president who puts things on Twitter, that line has been blurred like it never has been before. And a lot of people are just reporting on what the president tweets every morning, which is an interesting conundrum given the fact that we are talking about whether social media and the internet and Twitter and Snapchat and Facebook and all the other platforms, Instagram, are some kind of, of truth or something else. Um, yes, there is truth on the internet. There's all kinds of truth on the internet. There's all kinds of value on the internet. We can use Google and other tools to do research we never could have done 25 years ago, 20 years ago, 10 years ago. We use it for all kinds of things. I don't think in the end though that that should be your only source of news. And I don't think counter to your argument, that influencers are the best way to do that all the time. Because often, if think about the influencers you pick. Are you going to pick influencers that don't reflect your point of view? Some people will, but most people won't. People like to go on and pick influencers who reflect their point of view. And that's great, but that's a very filtered way of getting news and opinion. If you're just going with people that you like because they share your political ideology or your viewpoints or any number of other things, you're not getting the whole picture. So yes, it is a valuable tool. Traditional media is a valuable tool, but you need all those tools, and I think you would agree with me, in your toolbox to get some kind of sense about what's going on in the world. And that's, that would be my caution about relying solely on what you see on Snapchat or Facebook or Instagram or any other platform that you happen to be on 
to present, you know, it, that that's the unvarnished truth. Now, you know, my 19-year-old daughter would look at me and give me a withering glance and say, well, you know, those were simpler times. But there's some, I think there's some merit in using all those sources. And, and, I, and, I, and I think the state actor problem is very real. I, there are cyber troops in every country, if you want to call them that, who are sitting in boiler rooms figuring out how to exploit um, various tools, including social media. Um, I, Roy, did you want yeah, to practice I mean, giving him a withering glance first? Or <laughs> <laughs> Who's, is anyone on Medium in the audience? Anyone watch uh, on Medium? Okay, so for those who don't know, Medium is like this new platform where people can just blog directly on there. It's also another unfiltered truth. So what I'm trying to tell you here, there's this movement going on. And people are moving from one platform to another. So you could have regulation on Facebook today, but another platform is going to emerge tomorrow. Right. Mm -hmm. and it's up to you to keep basically chasing that wave because we, again, we want, we want to get the truth as, as close to it as possible, as real as possible, as unfiltered as possible. You might disagree with me, I know. But with the way I think about it, we're, 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 we're grew up, we grew up with the technology. We grew up with different distribution channels. You know, Facebook is one distribution channel. TV was distribution channel. Now Medium and Instagram, all those are different distribution channels. It's all going to go back to the amplification process that you put in in every distribution channel. What do I mean by amplification? Is the time you spend on each channel building that audience for yourself to become an influencer on that platform, to become an authority on that platform. So for you young audiences, for you like people who want to be in journalism, if you want to be known in the next you know, five, 10 years as a journalist, look at those platforms. Because you could pretty much go in, build an audience for yourself, um, and by the time regulation happens on Facebook, you're already blogging and talking about on this platform where no one else has done this yet, and you're known for it. Does that make sense? So it's kind of like this trend moving, and it's older generations trying to chase it, while the younger ones, ones are building new platforms every single day for different type of niche audiences. And at the end of the day, we all follow what we like and what we trust based on what we know in the world. We make decisions based on basically what, what our preferences. So whether we like it or not, we're just following in that bucket. And it's up to us to start kind of opening our eyes. Oh, this is a different point of view for that, for, you know, from that journalist. Uh, or this influencer talk about something else. Let me check this news source. And, and th those platforms are going to keep changing and the trend is going to keep changing. And it's up to us to kind of like be there first to make, an, to make a presence for ourselves or just ignore it and pretend things, the world is fine, you know. Newspapers are awesome, uh, you know. It's up to you to make that choice, you know. You, you know, I, I want to open it up to questions and remind people that there are microphones on either side. And this is really the test. Who is courageous enough to exercise their First Amendment rights and actually ask a question? 